The Taurus is a mid-sized car produced by the Ford Motor Company beginning in 1984. Oh, wait. Taurus is one of these stranger-looking launch vehicles that has been produced by the United States and the only derivative of the Pegasus launcher, which is the first privately developed launch system to actually have succeeded. Both Pegasus and Taurus were developed under the DARPA Small Standard Launch Vehicle Program. SSLV's goal was to make a quick response low cost launcher for DoD spacecraft. If you'll recall, Gary Hudson's Liberty was actually part of this program. Now, unlike previous rockets, this one has actually flown successfully with real payloads. And we're also going to be looking at the Taurus 2, since we're here. Taurus is, at its core, a Pegasus that's easy for me to model in Blender. It's Pegasus without the wings and associated structural uh, extras for air launching, a bigger payload fairing, and reused avionics. The air launch aircraft is replaced by a large, solid first stage. Like Conestoga and Delta, this has a four-digit code to describe the vehicle type that you'll be flying. The first digit is the series of Taurus that you're flying. A 1000 series is the first flown, carrying a TU-903 first stage from Peacekeeper as stage 0, an Orion 50ST stage 1, Orion 50T stage 2, and Orion 38 stage 3. The 2000 and 3000 series use a Castor 120 for the 0th stage. On the 3000 series, stages 1 and 2 are the XLT variants of the Orion 50. The second digit is the payload fairing type. One is a 63-inch diameter fairing, and two is a 92-inch diameter fairing. These fairings offered dual manifest capabilities, shown here. Now, one of the papers I found in my research actually suggests an 80-inch diameter payload fairing, which was obviously never built. Digit three is the third stage. One is an Orion 38, and two is a Star 37. Taurus never flew a Star 37. Digit four is zero. It was originally meant for a notional stage 4, but the occasion never arose. Some of the sources mention the possibility of a Castor 120XL used on the first stage when Taurus became Minotaur C, but nothing I've found says this actually happened. So, as an example, the Taurus 2210 is a Castor 120, Orion 50ST, Orion 50T, and Orion 38 motor. It uses the 92-inch fairing and obviously has an Orion 38 Stage 3. In some documentation, the 1000 series is called ARPA Taurus, 2000 is Taurus G, and the 3000 is Taurus XL. Nomenclature! A Taurus XLS was proposed, but obviously never flown. This added two Castor 4A solid motors as... Uh... Stage minus one? Oh, and by the way, Taurus hot stages between stages 0 and 1. See all these little holes? There's little fillers in there and they pop out when it stages. Isn't that neat? Let's take a look at these motors. TU-903 is the Peacekeeper first stage. It produces 495,000 pounds th of thrust, which is about 2.2 mega newtons on average in vacuum, and has an average specific impulse of about 277 seconds. And it contains about 45.7 metric tons of solid propellant. Castor 120 is an improved version of TU-903. Its average vacuum thrust is 363,000 pounds, or about 1.6 meganewtons, and has a specific impulse of 277.9 seconds. It contains 48.7 metric tons of propellant and burns for about 82.5 seconds. Orion 50ST operates with an average vacuum thrust of 106,000 pounds, or about 471 kilonewtons, and an average specific impulse of 285 seconds. It contains 12.15 metric tons of propellant and burns for 72 and a half seconds. The XLT variant has an average thrust of 137,192 pounds, or about 610 kilonewtons, and an average specific impulse of 285 seconds again, with 15 metric tons of propellant. Orion 50T operates with 25,910,000 pounds thrust, or about 115 kilonewtons, and a specific impulse of 290.2 seconds. It contains three metric tons of propellant and burns for about 75 seconds. The XL variant has 35,511 pounds thrust, or about 158 kilonewtons, and has 3.92 metric tons of propellant. 
Orion 38 burns with 7,155 pounds or 31.8 kilonewtons thrust and a specific impulse of 286.7 seconds. It has 770 kilograms of propellant and burns for about 68 and a half seconds. This stage is integrated into stage two as a hung stage for structural reasons. Since Taurus has actually flown, the payload performance is known and given in the user's guide. For a rough number to compare, we're looking at Leo due east out of the Cape, which is funny because Taurus never actually did that. The 1000 series could do about 1.18 metric tons, the 2000 1.25, and the 3000 1.45. In these graphs for the 2000 series, you can see that this is contingent on the payload fairing flying. This should be obvious because the payload fairing has its own mass and drag properties. Since Orbital Sciences was already building a sort of modular all-solid launcher and there is a growing, but ultimately doomed, small to medium lift market in the 90s, they proposed a Taurus II. Now I know what you're thinking. Wait, isn't this Antares? Yes, but no. Antares is the second Taurus II, which we'll cover eventually. This is the original Taurus II. Taurus II is a three-stage launcher with the option of up to eight Castor 4A boosters. Stages one and two are Castor 120s. Stage three is a storable liquid stage powered by two pressure-fed Estes motors from the Ariane 5 launcher. This runs on NTO MMH at about 30 kilonewtons of thrust and 324 seconds specific impulse each. The payload fairing is 120 inches in diameter, and the designs talk about including a Star 37 FM, 48A, or 48B kick motors for higher energy missions, like small geostationary satellites. A Taurus 2-0 could carry 5,000 pounds to LEO, or 1,800 to GTO with a Star 37 FM kickstage, which is slightly less than the satellite launch version of Titan II. The largest vehicle, Taurus 28, could carry 10,100 pounds to low Earth orbit, or about 3,850 to GTO, pretty much matching the Delta II in capability. Taurus 22 through 26 fit in this range, as you can see on the screen. I can't find much else on the history of this design, unfortunately. All I have are two papers and this bad photocopy of a photocopy of a picture of a model. Taurus 2 was abandoned sometime around 1995, and it's not hard to understand why. There's a glut of launchers of this size coming out, like Athena, Minotaur, Delta Light, and this thing would be competing with Delta II, which was already operational and selected as the Air Force's MLV. On a technical level, though, I don't see anything really wrong with this design. Taurus has flown a total of 10 times since 1994, carrying payloads to polar orbit from Vandenberg Air Force Base. The first flight took place on March 13, 1994, with the basic uh, 1110 model carrying Step Zero and DARPASAT. Flight 2 on February 10, 1998, which is a 2210 model, carried GEOSAT for the Navy and two ORBCOM satellites in the dual manifest fairing. Flight 3 took place on October 3, 1998. This is another 1110 carrying a space technology experiment spacecraft for the NRO. Flight 4 flew on the 2110 model on December 21st, 1999, carrying CompSat and Akramsat. Flight 5 carried the multispectral thermal imager to polar orbit on an 1110 model on March 12, 2000. Flight 6, a 2110 carrying Orbview 4 and QuickToms, failed on September 21st, 2001. The thrust vector control on stage 2 locked up for about 5 seconds, causing the vehicle to lose control. Funnily enough, it did actually recover and continued to fly the trajectory, but didn't make it to orbit. Flight 7 flew Rocksat 2 on the 3210 model on May 20th, 2004. Flight 8, a 3110, carried NASA's orbiting carbon observatory straight into the Pacific Ocean on February 24th, 2009. Flight 9 would do the same thing on a 3110 on March 4th, 2011. This would take NASA's Glory, KaiSat-1, Kermes, and Explorer-1 Prime, a modern CubeSat replica of Explorer-1, into the ocean. Both of these failures were due to the payload fairing failing to separate, leading to the vehicle being too heavy to actually reach orbit. 
The investigation discovered that one of the suppliers of parts for the fairing was falsifying test reports and providing substandard parts. This resulted in $700 million of NASA hardware going straight into the drink. And finally, we have Flight 10, a 3210 under the Minotaur C name. Uh, the C stands for commercial since Minotaur is made of military, not civilian, motors. It carried six Skysat and four Flock 3M spacecraft to polar orbit on October 17, 2017. I actually remember watching that launch when I was in college. Minotaur C hasn't flown since. A goofy-looking rocket, Taurus is the less popular baby brother of the successful air-launched Pegasus. Coming in three basic forms and a very interesting and completely original sequel design, the vehicle has flown ten times, seven of which were successful. Northrop Grumman still lists Minotaur C as a surface it offers, but in the modern commercial launch market, I doubt we'll ever see Taurus fly again. It's unfortunate, but understandable. And that's it. Taurus 1 and 2. Those are rockets you know.